Hi everyone, I'm Jeff. Um, it's uh, about minus 33 out right now, so I'm not doing a lot of shooting. Um, so I thought I, I might cover a topic that I think is really important in archery, and that's developing a proper shot sequence in your shot. Um, I remember watching uh, a video with Fred Bear, and he, he talked about himself being a snap shooter. And uh, he didn't recommend other people shoot that way. Um, one of the things that I think has changed since that time is, is, is the definition of snap shooting. Because I think what he really meant is he was a fast shooter. He shot quickly. And if you watch his form here and you watch him shoot, you can see that he had a really well-defined sequence of events when he shot. And uh, having a defined sequence of events during a shot, I, I refer to it as the ABCs of shooting. Um, you know, it, it's just like the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F. If you don't do D properly, E is not going to happen very well. So it's extremely important that, important that you single out those different aspects of your shot and focus on them. And you can train for them and practice with them individually. Um, I think with uh, Fred Bear, he shot for so many years that uh, his shot sequence has just become very, very fluid and that's why he's able to shoot so quickly. But if you're just starting out and learning, you want to slow your shot sequence down. You want to take 15 to 20, even 30 seconds to complete one shot. What I did here is I went into the barn yesterday and I just did a bit of shooting to tape this. And this is my shot sequence. Now, one of, one of the beauties about archery is that whether you're shooting a compound bow out of a tree stand of the deer, or whether you're at a 70 meter Olympic line shooting a recurve, or whether you're shooting at, uh, you know, ducks with a longbow in the air, um, the basic fundamentals of archery still apply. Um, and they apply to all aspects of archery, proper, proper back tension, bow arm, uh, follow through, everything applies. Um, so, uh, anyway, I'm going to go back, um, actually I'm going to move ahead a bit. Okay, so here's just a still. Um, in my shot sequence, the first thing you have to do is think of your setup. How is your initial posture? How are you set up? How are you standing? Are you kneeling for a shot? Um, how is your frame? Are your shoulders nice and square? You know. Are you in position, in the right position, to try to attempt to make that shot? Okay, that's the very first part of the shot sequence for me, is how am I positioned? How is my setup? Then I will knock the arrow on the string, and then I will look at my hook. How am I holding that string? That's another aspect of the shot sequence, hooking that string. If you're three under or three or, or split fingers or you're shooting with a tab or shooting with a glove like myself, all that comes into play. But that is a definite aspect of the shot sequence that you want to focus on. If you leave that out and you don't grip the string consistently every time, you're not going to do well with your shot. And that's why I say you need to focus on each aspect of your shot sequence one at a time in progression, just like the ABCs. So after I have a hook here, now I'm focusing on my mindset. What am I thinking about? Well, because I shoot instinctively, I'm thinking of that spot I want to hit. Okay, I'm thinking of the target. Okay. If I progress the shot on, okay, the next order of events for me in my shot sequence is I'm starting to draw the bow. So I have to think of that bow arm coming up. Am I going to follow the vertical line? That's where I did that other video uh, the other day about practicing for the vertical line. Okay, That's practicing for my bow arm. That's one specific aspect of the shot sequence. I'm broken down. I have broken down and I'm practicing for. Okay, So I'm thinking of my bow arm coming up on the vertical line. 
I'm thinking of what muscles do I engage and what muscles do I engage in what order for the shot sequence to come into effect. Okay, I have to think about the muscles in my back, my rhomboids. Am I going to expand my chest properly? And the next sequence of events, now I'm at my anchor point. Okay, so now I've got those back muscles engaged, my chest is expanded, my frame is nice and square, my bow arm is up. Okay, one of the things that I forgot to mention in my initial setup, in my initial setup is, is, is you know, how do you grip the bow? You don't want to grip it with a death grip, you want a light, comfortable grip. But that again is part of the shot sequence that goes along with, you know, hooking the fingers on the string. That's where that would fall into play. Okay. So at this point, I'm thinking of that elbow being allowed to move back. I'm not wanting to roll my shoulder. I'm wanting to move my elbow with those rhomboids in my back. But again, that's all part of the shot sequence, hitting my proper anchor point. So there will be some practices where I will practice and I'll just work on my anchor point. There will be some practices where I'll just practice on making sure I'm bringing that elbow back. Okay, You want to Im image the shot. Image what you're doing with your elbow. Okay, Then the next sequence... I've just released. Okay, so when I'm releasing, what am I doing with my fingers? Am I just relaxing my fingers? If I'm using a, 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 a release, a mechanical release, what am I doing? Okay, it all is part of the shot sequence and it's breaking it down into specific aspects, okay? And then after this, I've got my follow through. So by this point, I've completed my back tension. I've now reached my second anchor point. My bow arm is still up. I'm still on target. I'm still focusing on the target. My frame is still square. Everything is solid. So what I've done is I've tried to create a repeatable event. Something that I can do every single time I shoot. And that's what creating a shot sequence does. It creates a set of sequences, a set of events, which I can repeat every single time. And that's how you get consistent in archery. Because you want if, if you could have a machine draw a bow and shoot it, it would probably get a bullseye every time because it would grab the string the same way every time. It would release the arrow every time. It would draw it back the same every time. It would draw it back the same position every time. But we're not machines, so we have to come as close to that as possible. So by mechanically breaking it down into a repeatable shot sequence, that's how we improve our form. That's how we can practice. And as I mentioned before, when you break things down into a, a defined sequence of events, then you can practice that specific sequence or that specific event by itself. And you can improve it. Because what you want to do is you want to get to the point where your shot sequence becomes autonomic, where you don't have to think about it. You just know it's going to happen properly. Um, that's how you can see someone like Mr. Bear shoot so quickly, so accurately, he referred to himself as a snap shooter. And, and yes, you know, okay, he's snap shooting, but he's not shooting with reckless abandonment. He has a very well-defined shot sequence that he took years to build up and years to groove into that kind of state where he can shoot very quickly and not even think about it. He knows that those events are going to all take place in their proper order, in their proper position. One of the things that I, I, I negated to mention at the very beginning here when I was uh, in my setup 
is visually I'm thinking of the shot and visually I'm, I'm, I'm performing that shot before it happens. In my head, I'm, I'm seeing that arrow hit where I want it to. I'm practicing in this initial thought process. I'm going through that entire shot sequence in my head before I take the shot. And that's part of my shot sequence is visualizing that shot sequence, if that makes sense. And uh, so, you know, you can see I, I shoot very, very quickly. Now, one of the things that I do that, that is bad, and this is a case where I say, do as I do, and, or do as I say and not as I do. Um, when I started shooting many years ago, when I was about 11, I was overbowed. I had a, a bow that weighed too much for me. It was four, 45 pounds. And uh, I wasn't really strong enough to pull it back. So when I pulled it back, I developed a bad habit. At least this is where I think it came from. See where I, I draw the bow high. So when I'm drawing my bow, I'm drawing my bow high, and then I settle in. And that's not a great thing to do. You should be just coming up to target. Now, I've tried to correct that, and I've just shot for so many years now that I can't correct it. But... You know, I'm self-taught. I've never had anyone teach me how to shoot. So I developed this bad habit. And you can see here. See that? And then I settle into anchor. <laughs> and release. But that's now, you know, it's, it's almost become part of my shot sequence. I wish it wasn't. Um, I hope this uh, little video can help. Um... I, I'm, I'm just trying to get people to, to, to get their mind in a, in, a, in a certain mindset so that they can think of, of, of how they're shooting and how they're moving in a specific order and, 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 and put that shot sequence into place. Write it down if you have to and then you can practice it. Keep notes and then you can groove your golf swing as it were into a really good consistent fluid swing. Um, that's all I have for today and I hope this helps out. Um, everybody have a good day. Bye.